Please welcome Faith to Faith Ministries founder, Tommy Ishiro, and Cali Strong filmmaker, Andrew McIntosh. Good evening. Are you guys having a good time? Fantastic. This is like our first time doing a part film, part in person, also being streamed event. There's some glitches, but I think overall it's going okay. What do you guys think? All right. That's awesome. Well, Faith to Faith loves to invest in the next generation, whether it's Pulse or Dare to Share or Alpha, How to Life. There's a lot of amazing ministries that we partner with and play our strategic role here in New England to make sure that young people hear the gospel and not just hear the gospel, participate in sharing of the gospel. And then they grow up like Kyle did. And now it's 10 years later and he's a middle-aged man working for Faith to Faith. Nothing makes me happier. <laughs> now we've got another young man. And it's like generations of Macintosh. Well, you know, we've got his, his father and mother who are pastors of Berkshire Christian Assembly. I love you guys. I'm so glad you're here tonight. And uh, many Macintosh children that we all met through Lakeside. But Andrew, tell me a little more about your school family or interests because I'm going to kind of introduce this next thing that you're... Yeah, so yeah. Um, hi everybody. I'm Andrew, if you don't know. Uh, I live in a, a small town up in western Massachusetts, Pittsfield. Um, I'm from a big family, a family of seven, the second youngest of five. Uh, we were all homeschooled, so you can imagine, you know, that, that was a household, yeah. That's hard. <laughs> and, God um, bless you, Tatiana. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I've just, I've had a passion for film uh, ever since I can remember. I know God instilled that in me at a very young age. Uh, and it wasn't just like a fling or a thing that you, you want to do. I mean, this was instilled. I knew, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew it had to do with film, and I knew it was to bring God glory. You know, it's kind of funny because we discovered this about you by accident. We did an event at your church with your dad. It was poorly attended, but you got dragged in as a pastor's kid did, yeah. to run the soundboard, <laughs> didn't you? I did. And then suddenly I'm back there, and I'm talking to you, and you're telling me things. Next thing you know, we're hiring you for camp. Yep. And then we're traveling the world together. I know. Insane. Right? Crazy. God is crazy. Tell me about your experience in Ukraine, like filming it and kind of traveling the world. I mean, wow, what an experience. I mean, you think you know, you think you know something, and then God just, he can flip it in a second. He goes around the world. There's people, I mean, I, I've known people now I would never know, and it's just because of him. You know, it's interesting because we all, through his video work here, we've seen clips. We're seeing Ukraine through Andrew's eyes. What... Can you explain a little bit about the passion like that you were capturing um, in Ukraine? Well, I've had a lot of me and God talks about how I'm going to do film. Okay. And, and I told him, I said, God, I am, I mean, I'm like a camera is to me, I am to you. I'm just a tool for your eyes yes. to show what you do. Amen. And so that's kind of how I, I take it. I don't see anything as my film or my, I mean, uh, I'm God's camera, if that makes any sense. That's way cool. And now, so now... We've got you in Faith to Faith. We're helping the launch Macintosh Films, That's right. right? That's right. I keep wanting to say AMC Films because you picked that weird website. <laughs> yeah. But but now it's a thing, and you're making your first film with us. Tell I me am. about this I am film so project. excited for this film project. Uh, coming in, I knew very little about it. I knew a little bit about the, the Zabians. This is the, our project we're doing is called Cali Strong. It follows a, an amazing teenage girl uh, from Lee, Massachusetts, right next to where I live, and, and her... Um, just her upbringing, how she grew up, her family. They also have a, an amazing Christian family. And a few years ago, she got into a terrible car accident. Yeah. I mean, awful. Mm -hmm. Like, 0% chance of survival. And I don't want to spoil anything, but God is good, amen? And amen. Callie's here. So uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. Tell us about what we're about to watch on the screen. So what we're about to watch on the screen is... Um, I'm going to take you to that night, the night of the crash. Okay. And you're going to metaphorically hop on um, Lisa and Ali, uh, Callie's parents' back, and they're going to kind of take us through the events of that night, how it okay. unfolded, the emotions. Okay, so, so we're going to watch a scene from the film that this young cinematographer has put together. <laughs> it's really cool. But what's even cooler is what you're going to do with this film. What are we going to do with it when it's done? So we have carefully designed this for churches, not to be okay. released in, you know, online or in theaters, but this is, we, we split it up for half of it. In the middle is a half segment, about 20 minutes, where someone, if you share it in your church, if you stream it, 
it's, it's a place where the gospel can be preached because that's what this film is all about. I love it. So, so what he's saying, just in case it's not clear, is two parts of the film. We're going to watch the part leading up to the gospel presentation. Right. Here's why I love this, Andrew, yeah. because people have stopped going to church after coronavirus for various yeah. reasons. They're watching church online. I don't want this online. I want people to come exactly. back to church. Amen. And, yeah. <laughs> And, and by using this film, especially this New England story, to invite people back to church, lots of people are following this family. We're so excited to have the Zabian family here with us tonight. But lots of people are following the story. It's human interest. And some people will walk into church for the first time in their life to find out what's happened to this girl, how she's doing. And we're going to meet them right at the door. We're going to shake their hands. We're going to have local pastors, empowered youth pastors, students, anybody really who wants to connect in with this vision and introduce them to Jesus Christ by a local voice, by a local voice, right? Yeah. yeah. So should we watch something? I think we should. You guys ready to watch this? All right. Give your attention to the screams. This is Callie Strong scene. It was um, August 7th, and uh, a year, a little over a year ago. It was Callie's last night of work, and she was going to be going back to college in about six days. And she really didn't want to go to work, but she did, because that's Callie. And on her way home, she hit a guardrail. She called Ollie and um, told him I hit the guardrail and he said just call the police and I'll be right there. So he got up out of bed, um, we were already in bed for the night, he got up and um, left to go pick her up because she said that the car was pretty banged up in the front. And I didn't really think that much of it, um, you know, she, was, she said she was fine, um, that she called the police, you know, she was going to call the police and I knew Ollie was on his way to go get her, so I was kind of relaxed about it. I wasn't really thinking that much about it. I had no idea of the situation of the car, other than she couldn't drive it. I asked her if she could drive it. She said no. But all I cared about, she was fine. And come to find out, the car was horizontal in a two-lane highway. I got a call from Ollie um, about 20 minutes later he arrived on the scene. Unbeknownst to me, and I can't remember if she told me, but there was a nice family. He was with him, him and his wife. His wife was sitting in the car. He was out in the road with a, he's a mechanic and he had a $400 flashlight and he was directing traffic around the car. And everything was great. Cars were just slowing down, going around nicely. And this is from his own mouth that he goes, your daughter was standing behind me sitting in the car and uh, he goes this car is not slowing down and he put the flashlight he goes I put this flashlight right on this young man he goes I know he saw me I saw him and he kept coming He was going faster and faster and faster and he yelled out run so he ran to the right my daughter ran with him and he heard a big smash. He felt, oh my goodness, the car, the kid hit the car. And he turned around, the car was fine. And he realized he hit my daughter. Callie's been hit, she's been hit. And he looked down and he saw, all he was on the ground was a, <clears throat> a sneaker and a sock. I um, jumped out of bed and Maya was the only one home. I was screaming for Maya. And she came upstairs and I just was shaking and screaming and crying. Callie got hit, Callie got hit, Callie got hit. Car hit her on the left side as she was running to the right. I saw the car on my, when I finally got down there. The car had a big V in the front. It looked like it hit a telephone pole. Ran down to my neighbor's house, Scott and Dale, and 
very disheveled, just panicking. And I asked them to, if they could drive us to the hospital that Callie had been hit. But unfortunately, it threw her. The kid was going 60 miles an hour. It threw her. And her right side of her head hit the pavement. We arrive at the hospital and um, Ollie's already there. So the doctors uh, gathered us in one room and they called us out. At this point, a few people had shown up. I don't even really remember who was there. Um, me, Maya, Ashley, Ollie, and there was a few friends that had shown up. And the doctor and nurses came in. They didn't come out and say it, but you knew it. Why don't you come out and say your, your goodbyes to, to your daughter? And uh, <clears throat> so when we went into into the room, into the emergency room, and she was laying with her eyes rolled back in her head, covered in blood. It was just like something out of the movies. She had blood out of her nose, out of her ears, out of her head. And it just didn't look good. It was the worst sight I could ever imagine. It just, uh, at your daughter laying on there, <clears throat> and uh, something you'll never forget. She looked dead. It was just horrific. And um, the nurse said, she's alive. She's alive. We're gonna have her. She's gonna go into surgery and just kiss your daughter and tell her you love her. Just grabbed the gurney. So let's go. Stop wasting time and wheeled her into surgery. And they brought us to a waiting area, and friends started to show up, and our neighbors were there, and Pastor Jim and Martha came, and other friends came, and I remember um, Ollie just sat with his head in his hands, and he was just praying. And I just needed to pace. My best friend Evie showed up and I just needed to walk and pray. And I kept thinking that there is no one that can comfort me right now. Like Ollie can't comfort me, my friends can't comfort me. And the only person or the only thing that can comfort me is Jesus, that's it. Like there is nothing of this earth that can give me any comfort like I couldn't be there for Ollie he couldn't be there for me my friends didn't they just couldn't do it and it was the first time I thought I had surrendered to God other times in my life but this was the first time in my life that I had no choice but to completely surrender I had zero zero strength of my own and I just had to collapse into his arms and I just, he sustained me. He gave me the strength. I didn't have a choice. I knew if there was any hope, it was gonna take the Lord to heal her.